Now, if you look in banjo books, there'll be a million roles, and there's a lot out there. And um, the roles are kind of a little abstract from actual banjo playing, because in order to play a melody, we've got to edit the role to get the melody note in there. And uh, Pat Cloud, uh, the person I consider to be my banjo teacher, kind of likes to joke that there's no such thing as a role. And so it's kind of funny. So in a way, there's not. But uh, I think about it like in terms of the alphabet. You know, the alphabet, you learn it in order to help you learn it, but in order to use it, it gets chopped up and used in different ways in literature. You don't encounter the alphabet in that order in a book, but it helps you to learn what they are to begin with. So that's kind of how I look at roles. They help you get going, you know. But uh, so anyway, a really good goal is just to learn how to roll a banjo, get it in tune, and play it in time. If you can do that and get a sound out of the banjo where it's a, you know, like a warm sound and you're getting a, a nice warm tone, um, then that's a really good goal. The thing about a banjo is, um, it's it's uh, the way it, it dumps the information. Like if you looked at a graph of amplitude versus time on a graph, it it, it, it releases the energy kind of quick and it has a pretty quick decay. So we're, uh, a lot of the techniques that we use to play the banjo are a way of getting sustain out of the instrument because it's very easy to play the banjo too loud and with too much staccato, which is a short sound because of the way it's built. You know, if we play a trombone or a harmonica, we can play a, a note that has a really long release. We can play it almost as long as we want, a human voice or a violin. But with a banjo, the notes kind of go plink and they go away. So a lot of the techniques, like the roll, as an example, is, a, is, a, is an idea for creating the illusion of sustain where we don't really have sustain. So instead of like uh, on a piano, I could hold the sustain pedal down and hit a G, and it would ring for a pretty long time with a banjo. If I hit a G kind of in a way, it sort of plinks and it goes away. But I can create the illusion of sustain by rolling it and going... It creates the illusion of sustain in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in like these little tiny dots. It's kind of like a, the way a comic book is made. There's, if you look really close, it's like these little tiny dots, but it's actually, when you step back, it sort of makes this illusion of like a continual uh, event. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at some left-hand stuff there to get some music out of it. Uh, one thing that's really good to learn is just the G major scale. And what a scale does is it's just, it's just a series of notes. If you remember that song, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, it's just like a, a series of tones that sort of show you where a lot of the melody is going to come from in this key. And like a, a, a good scale to learn that since we're tuned to G is the G scale. So what you do is you start, I'm just going to play all the notes with my thumb, but you start on the open third string, which is a G. Then you play a A at the second fret of the same string. The open second string. Second string at the first fret. Open first string, then I pick up the first string of the second fret, first string at the fourth fret, then I go to the open fifth string, and that makes a G scale. Then I can descend. And what I'm doing when I'm playing a scale like that is I'm trying to make the banjo always make sound. So what I have to do is I have to leave my fingers down. That's another good thing to remember on the banjos. Always leave the left hand down as long as you can to try to make a legato sound. If I pick my fingers up, it goes. And that's like this real chopped. To me, it's kind of like non-musical. But what you want is you want to get. always making sound and each note is like this round thing that is not, it's, it's got a real balanced sound and then the next note starts and the next one starts and there's not a gap in there and the way I'm doing that is leaving my left hand fingers down so when you play a tone you've kind of got to get the next note ready to go when you switch tones this note obviates the preceding note when the A starts the G has to go away so, but then when I go to the open second string I can lift this note kind of keep ringing Again, this note obviates the C, displaces the B. And the same thing when I go to an open string. I kind of leave my finger, let that ring as long as I can. But I try to let the banjo ring. And I try to leave my, make my fingers work like little levers down here, where if I'm descending, I've got to think about the note ahead 
the next note and sort of get it ready. Because once I pick my finger up, the note dies. So to descend on the banjo, like on that string right there, I would, I would get this next note ready to go. So I can... The idea is to, is to get as much... Uh, it's a, called legato. It's uh, the opposite of staccato. It's, you're giving the note full value and getting as much ring out of the banjo as you can. fingers down as long as I can trying to get a nice round sound. Another thing about the banjo you'll notice is it's sort of a vector. The sound comes straight out of the banjo this way um, with like a guitar or a violin. I, I get the feeling that the, the instrument sort of is like makes this kind of like little globe or whatever around you where the sound comes from. With the banjo the sound sort of shoots away and it's real easy to kind of play a little harder than you need to and it's easy to play louder than you need to. So um, it's, it's, it's a we can get a a nice warm round sound by not striking the banjo too hard. I hit the banjo really hard. It's it's a place where the quality of the instrument will deteriorate. So we want to get right there in the middle where it's like uh, loud enough to produce a nice melodic uh, or nice uh, middle range of the dynamic range. You know where it's not too loud, not too soft, good sort of beefy sound, but not too loud. And then if you play too whisper thin too, then you're not getting any technique out of it. You kind of got to set up vibration in the banjo. And when you hit a note. Um, it takes a minute for the banjo to kind of react, so you always kind of leave everything down and try to get the full value out of the tone, because when you hit the banjo, it sort of takes a second for the thing to start ringing, but once it, once it goes, the whole banjo will start working. The head goes and the whole thing starts moving in your lap, and that's a pretty cool feeling. It really gets to making a sound, you know. So um, three really easy chords that you can use are G, C, and D7. So G is super easy because we're already at a G. This is open like that, so there's G. Now when I want to go to a C, um, I start, I put my index finger on the second string at the first fret, my middle finger on the fourth string at the second fret, and my ring finger goes on the first string at the second fret, and that changes it to a C chord. So I can practice going back and forth. A D7 just uses two fingers. Uh, it uses the same C note as we used before in the, in the C chord with the index finger at the first fret of the second string. And then the middle finger holds down the A note on the second string, uh, excuse me, at the third string of the second fret. So I'm holding the, the middle finger down on the third string of the second fret and the index finger down on the second string at the first fret. And that makes a D7. So now I've got three chords, G, C, and D7. changing the chords. And there again, like I really, if I play, you know, if I really dig in, the banjo's not going to sound very good. So I play right in the middle of where the dynamic range is. You know, nice in the middle there. Try to get a nice round sound. 